Hi, Sheila here with Creative Aging. We are going to continue doing some more jewelry with our Sculpey Polymer Clay and Silver Pigment today. Um, this pigment is gonna make it look like metal. And as you can see, there's kind of like an, a flower design with spirals and a lot of texture. And so um, I'm gonna show you how to make this one. Of course, you can always change the shape of your necklace if you'd rather have this design on a teardrop. Um, you're welcome to make this however you want. Since you'll be the one wearing it, I'd like you to love it. And so, um, yeah, please feel free to branch out and change this up a little bit. So we're gonna need, of course, our Sculpey Polymer Clay. You don't need that much. That's actually probably too much, but um, that's okay. We're gonna cut it down. And then your Silver Pigment. This is Pearl X Powder Pigments. And then you'll need a dry brush. It doesn't matter what size. A pencil. Make sure there's a good eraser on the end of it. And a butter knife. Or if you have clay tools, um, you can you know bring out your clay tools. But a lot of people don't have clay tools in their facility, so I'm just trying to give other options. And then to poke the hole, just use a paper clip, and we'll just use that end. Um, if you do have clay tools, you're just gonna need the needle point clay tool. But this would be just as fine. It, it really pokes almost the perfect size hole. Okay, so we are going to start, of course, with rolling our clay, and I mean, warming it up. And you can roll this flat with a rolling pin, but I just figured we'd do it all with our hands today. Um, one good thing about this project is since we're doing so much design on it that you don't really have to have it perfectly flat because we're going to be etching into it so you won't be able to notice. But if you prefer to have a rolling pin or you can use like a cup if you want it, if you prefer to make it flat with the pin instead of your hand. So after it's warm, let's just go ahead and start flattening it with our palms. And one good thing about this is all the lines in your hand are going to add some extra texture. So it makes it more interesting anyways to not be t perfectly smooth. So we're just gonna let our palms and our lines add to the design. So you wanna flatten it, you know, just think about it's gonna go on your neck. Um, so there's a certain thickness. You don't want it too thick and you don't want it too thin either. And you can even set it down if you prefer and flatten it that way. Just make sure to turn it. Okay, so that's probably good right there. And now we're gonna take our butter knife and just make a, either a rectangle or a square and we're just going to push down, move it, and then push it to the side. And it makes a pretty perfect cut. And we're gonna use our fingers because you know this has a little bit of um, edge on it so you can see that when we cut, we'll just smooth that out with our fingers. Okay, let's get this out of the way and we have our square. If you want to smooth the edges, you can just a little bit. If you like them a little bit rough, that's fine too. So you don't have to do much. You just kind of have to drag your finger lightly across to just smooth that a tiny bit. Now let's take our pencil and Wherever you want your flowers to go, just use the eraser. And I want to make some of this design pretty deep. So I'm gonna push my eraser 
into it and I'm going to twist it. Okay. And then um, maybe, actually let's draw the first flower because then that will determine where we want the second one. You could press the center for both flowers, but I'd rather see how big this one is because that might change how we want it to go on this. So this is, just think about, like on your paper, you're going to always think about your composition and where things are placed. I want you to think of this small piece of clay the same way. And so this is like a piece of paper and you want things to be balanced and interesting. And so you could do a flower in the center if you wanted. I'm going to do a couple and then have them go off of the the clay piece. I just think that that's a little bit more interesting and so remember drawing with your pencil we're going to take those little rough chunks out clean the pencil each time and I'm just going to show you right there see how rough that looks go ahead and use your finger and push some of those aside Depending on how sharp your pencil point is, you know, it, it can change. So I like to each mark, I push them and smooth them, and then I might go over it again. So I'm going to go over that part again, make it a little deeper. And then add another petal. And I'm doing this design because we just did a drawing with this same kind of shape flower. So I figured this would be easier to think about and... I'd rather you focus on the placement and how to work with the clay and just then, you know, I don't want you to get stressed out about the drawing into the clay. And you can't really mess up these kind of flowers. That's what's nice. So now this is not perfect. Um, there are a few little rough spots, but I'm making it really easy. We're going to add little dots and stuff at the end. So it's going to cover up a lot of those, those marks. So that's, that's probably fine right there. Now I'm going to figure out that, so this will be the top. And I'll go ahead and do another flower kind of at this bottom corner. Same thing. Push your pencil, move in circles, just kind of twist it. See how I'm using the pencil? So I'm just pushing and tw twisting and then do the same thing. Make these petals as big as you want and you're going to go off the side of the clay. clean my pencil in between each one just so it's going to make it easier when I smooth them in a minute. So I want you to check out my rough edges. See that? We're going to use our finger, kind of move some of those out of the way. So I, I like to just brush my finger to the outside and I move the clay off. So that gets some of the little extra pieces off and away from your design so you can focus on your drawing. And then I'm gonna go over a few of these lines again, just to make them a little bit more, you know, a little deeper. And um, when we put the pigments on, it's gonna exaggerate every little line that you do. So it, it looks even better once we put the pigment on it. So the deeper you go, the more, you know, interesting the design will be and it's good to play with um so the the deepest part is going to be the center of the flowers and then i want these petals to be kind of in the middle and then in a minute i'm going to do some spirals and i want that to be kind of a light pressure so you want a variety of marks and you don't want it to be all the same So I'm going over everything again, just to make it a little bit. See right there where I smoothed it, it kind of lost a little bit of the petal. So I'm going over this one. 
again. And then the same thing, if you get a little chunk, you just move it out of the way or take it out with your pencil. And then let's, um, I'm gonna do lots of little dots I, I want it to look almost like crushed metal. So think about how you've seen silver where it's um, crushed silver. It's, it's always really pretty and interesting and it reflects all the, kind of, it just reflects better in the light. So I'm gonna do that on the petals. So I'm just gonna use my pencil and just do tiny dots and move it around. And this will help clean up some of the edges too. And so I'm not really doing any special design. I'm just moving it to where the whole thing is textured. And I'm doing this to each petal. I'm going to do the same thing here. And see, this helps because um, on this edge right here, it's just not perfectly even. So it's going to cover up a lot of these marks and just make, it's gonna clean it up where you're not gonna to have to manually clean it up as much. So right there, just covering that up. And I'm actually moving, cause I, I like the, since I'm holding the pencil the same way, I'm moving it each time so the marks kind of look the same on each petal and going the same direction. So see how I'm moving and turning? You, of course, don't have to do that, but you can if you want. I just automatically do that, I think. Okay, let me show you up close how that's looking. Okay, so now, now let's do some spirals. And this part, you know, you're just kind of playing, you're just doing some little spirals. Now this doesn't have to be as deep marks. It, you kind of want it lighter actually. Because this is just part of the background, so you don't want this to be the focus of your design. So just lightly do some spirals, just part of the background. And hopefully people see these things and actually assume it's metal I think they will this pigments made to look like uh, metal I mean silver so it will look like that versus clay and you can keep going with design um, I'm gonna do that one again it, it was not deep enough And I'm going to keep going with this spiral. See how I just go off the edge? And that keeps your eye going. So, you know, when, when somebody's looking, they're going to kind of follow, like subconsciously, they're going to follow some of these lines off of your, your piece and kind of go back in. So it just keeps somebody's eye moving. So just think of this just like a painting. You want the eye to, to continue throughout the entire piece. And I'm going to do little spirals in the center of the flower as well. Now that is tiny, but it's just an extra detail that will be cool. And figure out where you want your top to go. So if you like it to be hung in this this way, if you think that'd look better, then you'll put the hole at the top there. I would turn it a few different ways because you might change your mind. 
You might decide that looks better. You could even hang it as a diamond if you wanted. So before you poke the hole, I want you to make sure that these edges are really smooth. So, and then what I'm gonna do, just to make sure my, since we did so much drawing, do you see some of the little chunks got stuck on the side? Use your finger and get those smoothed out. You can even use your knife again and just push it. I'm gonna turn it upside down because this is the smoothest part. So I'm just gonna push it up against the edge just to make sure it's good, really flat. So I'm gonna push it and move it. You're not cutting it again, we're just kind of smoothing it. You can do this with your finger too, but it's up to you. So that smoothed it out. I'm gonna use my finger just to get a couple little things sorted. Okay, and so now I'm going to poke my hole in it after you get it exactly the way you want. Now see right there, I'm kind of picky, but I don't like that right there. So I'm either gonna smooth it out or I'm gonna continue my spiral and I'm gonna actually just, I'm gonna do more spirals just to cover that piece I don't like up. So you can do either. You can add more design to cover up a little lumpy part or something that you don't like, or you can smooth it. And I'm gonna make this spiral a little bit more obvious. I think There we go. Okay, now I'm gonna poke the hole. Take your paper clip, figure out where you want your hole to go. Make sure that it's right at the top in the center, in it, or if you want a diamond, you're gonna do it in the corner. Um, and just gently push that paper clip all the way through. So after I push it through, I'm just going to let, you know, very gently move it in circles just to make it a little bit bigger. Since it might shrink a little in the oven, you just want to make it a little bit bigger than this size. And I'm going to smooth that out a little bit because I, I don't want it to close up. If I set that in the oven right now, the clay might push into that hole. So I want to open that up. And I might even go to the back of it with my paper clip so make sure it's clean and then go in there so I'm going both directions just to make sure that it's open and now and as I picked it up I messed up a corner so I'm going to redo that again there we go So before you do the pigment, this is where you want to fine tune every single mark. If there's something you don't like, fix it now. Once you put the pigment on, it's very difficult to fix. So if you want to take your pencil and just clean up anything, do it. And then you're going to be ready for pigment and baking. Okay. So I'm going to use a paper plate just to keep my pigment kind of cleaned up because whatever pigment you don't use, you can definitely recycle it back into your jar. Um, I'm just going to put a little bit, you don't need much. So just tap it slightly. See, that's how much I used. Not much. Can you see it? And if you decide you want this gold, you can do this gold as well. I just thought it'd be fun to do a silver project. Um, and you can also mix your silver and gold and make a rose gold. So if you are one of those people that does not wear silver ever, please make this pendant whatever color you'd want. So just, I like to use my pigment and tap it so that it really falls into each of my little groove that I made. So I'm gonna tap it and go all the way around and make sure that every single piece is covered. And so this is a, a pearl, so it's a very shimmery silver. And 
And also the tapping kind of keeps it more shimmery. If you paint it, sometimes it can dull. So I do both. I sometimes paint it and then I also tap it just to get down in these parts. So see how deep that is? You have to tap it to get every little piece covered. And you wanna go around the edges too. And you can either just leave it on the, pap on the paper plate to get the edges or you can pick it up. Depending on how gentle you are, you can pick it up. If you're not confident that you can be gentle with your hands, then maybe leave it on the plate. It's up to you because you don't want to squish it now at this point. You'll probably have to start over. So after it's all done, then you're ready to bake it. So here it looks. See how pretty that is? And so bake that for 10 minutes and make sure um, you have a, you know, if you have a little um, small oven, sorry, a toaster oven, there we go. If you have a toaster oven, you can use that. You can use a regular oven. It has to be 275 for the temperature. Bake it for 10 minutes. Make sure to transfer this very gently and put it on like a cookie sheet. Um, I would put foil over the cookie sheet and put it gently on top. Put it directly in the oven, bake it for 10 minutes, and take the cookie sheet out of the oven and let it completely cool before you touch it. After it's cooled, you can pick it up and it will be completely hard and very durable. So after you take it out of the oven, then you can put your string on it. Now, you, you probably have a lot of things in your facility that you can use. Um, this is like elastic. You can get this at Hobby Lobby or Michaels and they have a lot of different colors and it's nice because you can cut it whatever size and it will still stretch over your neck. And this is really cheap. You can get a um, roll of it for maybe a couple dollars. So if you have something like this, you can either just put it directly through the hole and then tie it around your neck if you wanted to do that. So that is one option. Another option is if you have if you have um, small jump rings, you can put a jump ring through it, and a package of these for about fifty is maybe a dollar ninety nine. And so this is just a silver jump ring. You just open it with your fingers or a tool if you have a tool. But these are pretty easy. You just go forward. So don't open it this way. Open it forward or back. Okay, so see it's opened. I can just slip that right in through my hole. And then you close it the exact same way that we just went. And so make sure it's perfectly closed so there's no gap. And then you can put any kind of chain or string on this. So at this point, I could put my silver cord on it and double knot it. And then it's ready to wear. If you have a chain at home, you know, anything will slip onto this loop. And if you don't have a loop, you can just put a string directly through this hole. So any kind of string or ribbon would do. I have a ton of different ones. So, you know, you can have different colors. If you have some cord or this is hemp cord, you can use small ribbon. You can really use anything you want. It depends on what you wear and what, how you want to match this. And so that's the last step. And then it's ready to wear. And this pigment, it, you know, the first couple of times you wear it, it might brush off a little bit, just a little bit of silver. If you wanted to take a paper towel, you could go over it. It won't hurt it. So this, you know, this pigment will stay on. It should last, you know, forever. I wouldn't shower with it. I don't know if I would get the pigment wet, but it won't come off. Your piece will always be silver and it, it looks really pretty. So I hope you have fun and I hope you like it. Um, and I hope you wear it or give it away or save it for a Christmas gift. Okay, I'll see you next time with a new technique. Thanks.